All right, let's get in today. We're going to be talking about um, pretty much this, the mystery of answered prayer. How about this, the mystery of unanswered prayer. I don't know if you've ever been through that scenario where you've prayed really hard for something. You're like, you know, God, I don't like being disappointed. I'm a pragmatic person. If I go in a car and it doesn't start, I bring it to the dealership. And if it continues to give me trouble, I continue to bring it to the dealership. In fact, I brought my car back so much to the dealership that Volkswagen enacted the lemon law and got a brand new car out of it. Can I hear persistence? Persistence. I refused. I would not tolerate it. So this is a brand new car. This is when I was silly and dumb and bought things I couldn't afford. But that's beside the point. <laughs> but I, I said, no, I'm not going to put up with it. I keep on bringing it back, kept bringing it back, kept bringing it back until I got justice. In so many ways, we need to be persistent with prayer. A lot of us give up way too fast. And it is not a going on a hunger strike. It's not trying to get God to do what you want to do. But what happens when you pray and everything goes wrong? What happens when you pray for her to come back, your dog to come back, the Bible to come back, and it's a country western song backward? What happens if it doesn't work out that way? What happens if you pray and things get worse? Do you get frustrated? I know I get frustrated. If I go into a room and I turn the light on and it works sometimes and other times it does not, after a period of time, like, you know, enough with the light switch. I'm going to light a candle or put a battery-operated lamp. I'm not going to mess with this anymore, right? And we want to control. And if we cannot control something, then we don't want to do it. And I'm convinced much of our theology, theo is God, ology, study of, we all have theology, whether we know what the word means or not. Some of us have given up on prayer. And remember, everybody, prayer does not change God. Well, hang on. Prayer changes us. That's partially true. I like what Chuck Smith said. He said the following, prayer does not change the purposes, purpose of God, but prayer does change the action of God. God is going to be God, no matter what you say, no matter what you do. But, you know, we can see in Scripture, the Bible says this, and we talked about this, that God told Moses when the Israelites rebelled, he says, leave me alone. I'm going to make you a new people. And Moses goes, blot me out of the book. And the Bible says God changed his mind. Now, I'm not going to get into theology, whether that's true or not, but the truth of the matter is we shape history based on how we pray. God's pervasive will, God's sovereign will is going to take place. But there's a permissive will. There is a will, and that we can actually speed the day. We talked about that the first week. We spoke about prayer. The second week, we talked about the big obstacle to prayer. And then you and I are stand praying, we are to forgive. And that is a nuclear bomb in the bosom of the enemy when you and I walk in forgiveness. When we receive it and we, we give it out all day, all the time, it makes our prayers strong. Well, today we're going to talk about unanswered prayer. Well, what do we do with that? How we work it out? What about unanswered prayers? Why doesn't God answer all my prayers? Right? I want him to answer my prayers. And, and some people would think, well, you know, I don't know why God does these things. Tell them I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> you just lied. I'm on the stage. I tell them I'm busy. I'll take their message. Okay. What about unanswered prayers? First, how to pray. Before we get into that, how do you pray? Aren't you glad that Jesus taught us how to pray? In fact, you know what's so amazing? The disciples were with Jesus for three and a half years. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him walk on water. They saw him rebuke the storms, and they stopped they saw him do amazing stuff, but they never asked him how to do miracles, at least not in the record of the Bible. Maybe they did privately, but in the record of the Scriptures, they didn't ask him how to do that. You know what they asked him? How do you pray? Why did they ask Jesus how to pray? Because they're having an amazing time. People are getting healed. Things are happening. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? He goes up to a lonely place by himself, and he prays. And they come to Jesus, Jesus, come on, everyone's looking for you. I must be about the Father's business. He constantly got away and slipped away to pray. They knew, and they heard him pray out loud as well. And he knew his prayers were powerful. And they knew the secret sauce, if you will, if there's such a thing, is, is the prayer life that Jesus had. He said, I only do what I see, present tense, the Father doing. He was in constant prayer. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us that we are to pray without ceasing the Thessalonians. And what that simply means, everybody, is to have a prayer-like mindset, that you're like a first responder. You're like a policeman or woman. 
you, that you're driving around your patrol car, but you have the CB radio ready at any moment. They call you, you respond. Okay, this is the kind of attitude we're talking about constantly. God consciousness. God, our God, not God consciousness with crystals. Okay, is that no Lucy, no, no Lucy in the sky with diamonds, okay? So what about unanswered prayers? First, how to pray. Jesus does not leave us alone. He says, pray to God humbly not to impress others. I mean, I heard some people preach, and, and they pray. They're amazing, amazing. I talk to them um, privately. They talk normal. But when they grab them, I go, oh, Lord Jesus, Father in heaven. I don't know why they put for brado, but they put for brado. Lord, we beseech thee. We have a burden, oh God. Lord, you see what's going on in this country, Lord Jesus. Now I talked to him. He's like, hello, Harris. Sounds like Vince, sounds like Vincent Price. Or, you know, that, that's not how we talk, right? Now there's nothing wrong with that. If they want to do that, have at it. But if someone comes up to you that way, can you imagine being in the store? Mm, how much does this cost? I have a burden, Lord. Boy, I'm pretty good at that. I should do more of that. It's just, this cold is making me sound like a, well. I did it my way. I better stop. Pray to God humbly not to impress others. He's not impressed with many words. The Bible talks about that. And when you pray, you must not be like the what? Hypocrite. You know what a hypocrite is? Look at your neighbor says, you're a one. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> hypocrite is the Greek word used for actors in the Roman theaters, Greek theaters. What they did, they'd have, one, they'd have two or three actors, and they would play different parts by putting a mask in front of their face. That's the word we get hypocrite. A lot of us wear masks. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. And when you pray, you must not like be the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by all. The Pharisees to come out with bells and, you know, and, and go out of the street corner, oh, Lord. And they, they do all this, like, contentions, and they did be real spiritual, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, I'm married to an amazing woman, Sandra, and I have conversations with her in public, right? I talk to her in public. I talk to her with my children around. And but sometimes we get into a quiet place. Can I hear an amen? Don't think that way. I'm talking about a quiet place. Husbands, you know what happens. You have company. Your wife goes, can you come to the kitchen just for a minute? You're in trouble if that happens. What are you doing? Right. But Sandra and I have private conversations, right? What relationship has any depth to it if you never have a quiet, personal conversation with? You can't name one. So it doesn't mean we don't pray publicly. Well, the Lord says go to the quiet place, and we're not pray out loud. No, they prayed out loud together as well. And they raise their voices, can I hear? Yes. Okay? So, but sometimes you have to get to the quiet place. That's where the intimacy takes place. Jesus went to a quiet place. So, your father who's secret, the father who sees you in secret will reward you for praying. Okay? That's, is, that, is that clear, everybody? So, pray to God humbly not to impress others. And God's not impressed. There, there was a story of a, of, a, of a tax collector Jesus talks about in the parable. He's beating his chest. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Then a Pharisee comes in. Oh, thank you. I'm not like that filthy person over there who votes differently than I do. Oh, Lord, gee, thank you. I'm not like that. And Jesus says the following. I kind of changed the story just a little bit. He says, which one did God hear? The one who was beating his chest. Okay? So pray to God humbly, not to impress others. Pray with your heart, not incantations and empty phrases. You don't have to, like, get your Bible out and say it enough times. I want you to say it 800 times, and on the, and on the eight, 900th time, it's going to fall. Now, maybe God tells you that. That's fine. But it's not about saying things over and over and over and over. How many of you like a nag? Right? 
Father, Lord, pray it. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who I mean, that's not really very effective, everybody. We talked about that last week, right? Don't pray with empty phrases. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. You know what they do? The witch books and warlock books, they have all these prayers, and they, they had to say it, and they cut these animals and put them in the water. <laughs> How do you know so much? No one asked me. Anyhow, but, anyhow, but, the, but, but they do all these things, and they had these, like, these spells they try to do, and they try to manipulate the spiritual realm. In fact, unfortunately, I've seen people, even that come to our church, that have fallen away, that have gotten involved with witchcraft Christianity. And they, they pray to these ridiculous star gods and, and alignments with this. And that's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And they try to say it a certain way. And you gotta, you got to send me $100, and I'm going to tell you that prayer. Call now. And they get caught in this nonsense. And only this little group has the way. Everyone else doesn't know what they're talking about. That is always a cult. We're not the only church that has our act together. Okay, we sort of have our act together. And someone said to me, I don't like organized religion. Neither do I. That's why I'm the pastor of this church. I'm very organized. But now, <laughs> but, you know, if anyone, no, it isn't, it's about Jesus. It's not about a personality or ministry. Well, this church, no, baloney. Don't believe it. That's a cultish attitude. As the Apostle Paul said, these super apostles with these crazy things. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases that the Gentiles do. You have to pray this prayer this way. No, you don't. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Well, if he knows what I need before I ask him, then why on earth do I have to ask him? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, he wants a relationship. Number two, the context of that would be the things that you need. But sometimes you have to birth and go through prayer and continue to pray and not give up on prayer. There are times where you're praying for God to save a lost one or maybe to bring healing upon somebody, and you want to continue to pray. And, then, and so the Bible talks about that as well. So we pray to God humbly, pray with your heart, and pray from your position as God's children. You're not a warlock or a witch with a contention book. You don't have a broth you're making at night and riding broomsticks all through the day. No, you have a relationship with God. You speak to him as a person. I heard a story of a man that was in front of the White House, and he was very frustrated because he lost a couple brothers in war, and he was going to be called to war during the Civil War. And, and he was afraid because his mother would have no children. So he's out there trying to get into the White House. He can't. This young man comes up to him and says, what's going on? He explains what's going on. He says, I wish I could get to Abraham Lincoln, but I can't. No one will hear me. I'm here. And here's it. Well, come follow me. This young man takes him through the security gates, takes him into the White House, goes into the president's chambers and brings him before Abraham Lincoln and says, Dad, this man needs to see you. We have Jesus who goes to the Oval Office of all the universe on our behalf. It's in relationship with him. It's not because you're such a great person or you say enough, enough right words. That's how we do it. You see, you pray from your position as God's children. Pray like this. He's telling his disciples, our father, a term of endearment. It's like calling. It's a very intimate term to God. It's something that you can almost sacrilege a little bit. You know, people get all upset. It's Abba God, which I know people don't like when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. It's almost like saying, Dad. Right? Or even, I'm going to say it, Daddy. Oh, stop it. This is over. No. That's the kind of thing. We went to, just, just yesterday, we went to a beautiful birthday party for one year old. I love going to those things, right? It's such a blessing to see people that are saying you'll get married. You marry them. You pray for them to have babies. And then they have babies. And you go there. That's just a blessing to see that happen. Anyhow, so this child's like, yeah, yeah, Daddy. Well, you know, right? A beautiful little kid. And you want to pick him up. You say, oh, praise God. Right? And it, it, well, that's just so irreverent to do. No, the child's speaking the language of the father. God loves when you call out to him. You know, we, we're children of God. We can boldly enter into the throne room of God and ask him for whatever we want to, even parking spaces. 
unless I'm trying to get a parking space. Some of you praying for the Bengals to win against the Patriots. The Bengals are praying to win, and the Patriots are praying to win. They're both going to lose, and the Giants are going to win. Can I hear amen? How can they both lose? I don't know, but it's possible by faith. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, okay? He's our God. And also pray with faith. It makes no difference. God's going to do what he's going to do anyhow. No, that's not true. We learned that. God is going to do what he's going to do, yes. But sometimes God will change his mind as long as his will and his character is not changed. Sometimes the timing of God. And sometimes, this is a bad one, sometimes he gets you what you, gives you what you ask for. Ask Balaam that question. All right. Pray with faith. And what does it say in Hebrews eleven six? 6? But what? What? Faith. The word pistis, faith. If I said it correctly, sometimes don't get angry, get pistis. Get faith. So what's going on? I'm, I'm having pistis right now. <laughs> okay. Someone made me a T-shirt. I got to wear it one Sunday. But with, that's, I'm not swearing, I'm being crude. That's actually the word for Greek for faith. But without what? Faith. It's impossible. To, what's faith? Faith is the confidence of things hoped for and the assurance of things not seen. And it goes through the whole thing. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God or she must what? Believe that he is a what? Reward, rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek. My well, asked once. No, continue to seek God, believe him for miracles. And also, here's another one. You need to, listen, diligently doesn't mean I prayed and it's over. No, continue to go after God. Why does God need me to diligently seek him? I don't think it's right. Why do I have to do such a thing? Why can't God just answer the first time? I don't understand it. I heard of a man that had this boulder in the front yard of his house. He couldn't stand the thing. And he, he read the scripture that you have faith of a mountain. You could pray to the rock and it would move. And he prayed to the rock and nothing happened. He's getting irritated. So finally, he's beginning to press against the rock. Lord, you said you'd move this rock. He does it for two or three months. Four months go by. Five months go by. Now six months. This man every day is getting in his front yard pushing. And finally, the rock moves. He's like, whoa, how did I do that? And all of a sudden, you look at the man. He's got muscles like me. <laughs> big quads and big burly chest. Unshaven chest, I tell you. I'm the old school. Anyhow. And he put, <laughs> just get to my TMI. <laughs> I'm from the 70s. I got a gold chain, baby. And dice hanging from my, okay, let's move it. So he pushes the rock. And what happened is because he grew. Sometimes God wants to grow us up. Pray also with other believers in unity. One can chase a thousand, two ten thousand. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they fully came. They were all in one car together. They were in one accord. God likes Japanese cars. What can I say? He's not stupid. If you work for GM, get over yourself. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, and they were in agreement together, and they were seeking God together, and the Holy Spirit fell, and the church was birthed into a new age, not new age, but a new age of God's Spirit, and we're here as a result of that. Don't despise the days of prayer. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Realize that the enemy is not afraid of our church services. He's not afraid of your Bible reading, but I tell you what he's afraid of when you and I I pray the word of God. He trembles. And he'll try to make it boring and everything else. They're a court in one place. Now, just happens to have, we're going to have 10 days of prayer. We want to encourage you. Get one of these wristbands so you can show off at work. I'm a good Christian. I have a pray first. No. Why not pray first? Why is prayer the last resort? Pray first. And so we're going to have 10 days of prayer just to kind of help you guys to gin it up a little bit, right? Maybe fast during lunch or maybe fast donuts so we have more to give to the third service. I don't know. You should see the kids come out. It's like a war. But anyhow, so September the 8th to the 18th, and the 18th we're going to have a worship night. We're going to meet here daily at 12 noon. 
And you can meet us online at cornerstonecheshire.com. I told you that already, right? And we're going to be praying. We're going to be going after God. We'll be teaching you how to, we're going to be talking about how to pray this week. Okay? And then next week, I'm going to literally talk about how you should vote. Yes, I'm going there next week. All right. And no one's going to be happy. No one's going to be happy. And I'm going to wear, I'm going to have a shield. Pray with per persistence. Keep on, you know, the Olympic athletes, the business owners, people that refuse to give up. Keep on pressing on. It's sometimes the millisecond that makes a difference in who wins the race and who does not. Sometimes the best thing you can do is never quit. You know, winners lose more than anyone else, but they continue to process on. They do not quit. Do not quit. Keep being persistent. Now, there are times, though, how do you do it then? Well, keep on asking. This is actually the proper sequence of the verb tense in the Greek. It says keep knocking or be open to. Actually, it's this. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Don't stop believing. No, that's not another song. Okay. For who? Everybody, everyone who asks, receives. Really? Yes. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Wait a minute here. Well, I've been praying. Why doesn't that happen? Well, I'm so glad you asked. He tells him a parable. I'm going to make it quick. There was this widow who was being treated poorly. And she went to the town. Back in those days, widows had very little rights. They were really the they were not taken care of, and the Jewish community was really good for the widows. And so this widow goes to an unjust judge. He doesn't care about God, not a, not a believer in Judaism, nothing. She knocks on the door. Won't stop. Doesn't stop. I want justice. I want to be quiet, lady. And she would not stop. How many folks know that a woman who talks a lot and continues to ask, it kind of works sometimes, doesn't it? I'll just be honest. Women know how to ask like no one else, right? She keeps on knocking. He's like, oh, my Lord, I can't take it anymore. This woman is driving me crazy. It actually says in the Greek, you could say she's, make, she's giving me a black eye. It could, be, it could be actually in a figure of speech. She won't stop. So she finally gets to justice. Jesus says, if, you, if an evil judge knows how to do that, how much more will your heavenly Father meet you through those who are crying out to him? But then he goes like this, right? But because this widow keeps what? Bothering me. I will give justice. And then Jesus says to that, and he says this, and will God not give justice to his elect? And by the way, you were elected. I didn't run for office. No, Jesus ran for office, and you're all elected. Okay? He is elect. Who what? Cry out to him day and night. Will he not delay longer over them? I tell you, he will give them justice to those speedily. But, here's Jesus, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth. Don't give up on prayer. Keep asking. Keep praying for that son. Keep praying for that daughter. Keep praying for that grandson or granddaughter. Keep praying for your parents. Keep praying for that person. Keep praying for our country. Can I hear, Lord, we need help. Come next week. Okay. Yeah, but what about unanswered prayers? I have some prayers that are not being answered. Well, I'm so glad you asked the question. God always answers prayers, and usually in four different ways. Well, how does he do it? This is a good thing I heard a number of years ago. I don't know who came up with it, but I'm stealing it. It's mine. Here it is. First one is this. Sometimes he'll say no. Have you noticed that? Sometimes God says no. Well, God, you know, uh, I'm not really happy with my spouse anymore, and I, I, I've been reading books and everything and, I, and, and talking to people. I think I married the wrong person, but I found my soulmate at work. And she's married to the wrong buffoon as well. And we just click. And, and we even prayed together. We even had a chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A. And K-Love was playing. Now, of course... We even baptize our sandwich in the Chick-fil-A sauce together. Surely the God's in the middle of this. Because after all, the Bible says in Heretic 319, for God wants you happy over all else, you have to be happy. Your happiness is more important than anything else. 
as long as you don't hurt anyone else. We know it says that in Heretic 319. So I feel the Lord's telling me to leave my husband and marry this woman. Now, guess what that means? No. But it feels so right. How can it be wrong? No. No, God will not violate his word. He will not violate his word. I like what Ruth Bell Graham said. That's Billy Graham's wife. Now home with the Lord. Billy Graham was one of the greatest evangelists of the last century. Said this. This is what she said. If the Lord had answered all my prayers, I would have married the wrong man several times. <laughs> Lord, bring her, bring, her, bring her back, Lord. Bring her back, Lord. Thank God he did not bring her back to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so happy that I did not get her back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I wouldn't have my wife, Sandra. And believe me, I would have done it. Lord knows where I would be. I'd be probably selling some used cars in the middle of Kansas or something. I don't know what I'd be doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless her. But I thank God I didn't marry. It was the wrong woman. Can I hear it? Amen. But how many folks know, oh, Lord Jesus, bring her back. You know, claim it, blame it, grab it, grab it. I did all that stuff. Okay. Thank God it didn't work. Woo, hallelujah. Can I hear an amen one more time? Can I get a witness? Okay, sorry. I'm just, the Pentecostal's coming out of me, and I got a little, I got a little uh, rasp in my voice, and it just makes me feel like I'm more Pentecostal. Okay, all right. What does the Bible say? You don't have what you want because you don't, what? Ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because you're what? Motives matter. Motors are all wrong. You want only what you will give you pleasure. Oh, boy. This is what can happen, everybody. Sometimes God doesn't give us what we need. We, sometimes we get confused between needs and greeds. Right? Sometimes we think our name is Jimmy. Give me. No. Okay? The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, says this. And the Apostle Paul is giving the young preacher his protege, Timothy, says the following. For in the times, the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to what? Suit their own passions. Let's just change the gospel a little bit. We've evolved. No, you've devolved. Suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off to many myths. I'm telling you right now, there are Christians going off into crazy nonsense. We have deeper spirituality. You know, deeper, I had one guy who says, I'm going into the heavenlies and praying, and, and I'm praying in the heavenlies over India and all that. So why don't you go across the street and share, share the Jesus with your neighbor? That's a lot better than warring in the heavenlies, supposedly. Go across the street. Not that I don't pray for India, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. So the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. I'm so grateful we don't know what the thorn is. Some people swear they know what it is. Well, could be true, could be not. Because if the Bible told us what the thorn in the flesh was for the Apostle Paul, we'd have an excuse for that one thing. But we don't know. The Bible says he pleaded three times. And the word there, three times, and the understanding of it, and the context of it, he didn't just pray three times. You know that once, twice, and three. No, he didn't do that. What he did is he had three seasons of prayer. And finally, God says, that's enough. My grace is sufficient. But, Lord, why do I have this weakness in me? We don't understand the reason why. We don't know the reason why. Sometimes God will allow stuff I don't know. And if you don't know, don't say anything. When someone passes away, the best thing you can do is say, I'm praying for you. Don't you dare say, well, God needs another angel in heaven. Oh, God, don't say. Sometimes the best thing to do is say nothing. Okay? God always answers prayers in four different ways. We're going to conclude with this. It's the following. No, as we mentioned. And sometimes it's, you need to grow up first. You're not ready for it yet. You can barely ride your bicycle. You ran into an old lady last week. You don't even, you don't even oil your chain on your bicycle. How many oil your chain on your bicycle? Okay, you need to do that. You can't even go on the canal path without running to somebody. Why would I give you the keys to the family car? Show me first that you'll take care of the bicycle. Then maybe I'll give you something else. That'd be reckless as a parent to give your child something, right? Amen. 
So you have no, and sometimes God says, grow. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to, <clears throat> and from him to whom they entrusted much, they will be de- demanded more. Why do you think God doesn't speak as clearly as we like him to cl- speak to us today? In the Old Testament, it says, Moses, I don't speak to him in dreams and visions and riddles. I speak to him as a man speaks to his friend face to face. But do you realize if you hear God so well and you know and you disobey, there's problems. For example, Moses, the first time God said, I want you to strike the rock. When people were asking for water, the water came out towards the end of his ministry. He was hacked off at the people, rightfully so. God says, speak to the rock. What does Moses do? He gets ticked off. Do we have to bring the water? And he whacks the rock with the stick. The the water still comes out. People know no different. Mighty man of God. The guy goes, you disrespected me. You're not going to the promised land. You're coming up with me, but you're not going to the promised land. Now, if I were to hit the stone with the rock, all of heaven would have sat up and said, I can't believe Eric actually did that. But Moses could speak to God like a man speaks to his friend. Why is God going to give us high-voltage ampage if you and I can't even play around with 9-volt battery lights? It would be irresponsible of God to give us that kind of thing because he loves us and cares about us. To much is given, much is required. Be thankful. So sometimes God wants us to draw closer so we grow up a little bit. My dad tells a story that they had chicks. No, not those type of chicks. (laughs) They had the chicks, you know, the things that eggs. You know what eggs are, right? And and what happened was they had a lamp, and my dad felt bad for this one chick egg, so he broke open the egg. And for the rest of the life of this chick, before they ate it, (laughs) the chick was like this. Why? Because the chick never developed neck muscles. If they had neck muscles in the chick, I don't know or not. Because it couldn't peck out the egg. God sometimes wants you to battle in prayer to grow up. I've been through some things. I didn't think I was going to survive. I got through it. And now stuff doesn't bother me nearly as bad as it used to. Because I went through the other stuff. Do I want to go through it again? No. Okay? You follow me, everybody? Okay? And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? It's my money. Do I grow? Do I tithe on the grocer than that? I mean, I'm going to bring this up again. I don't want to. I'm not. It's not my favorite restaurant, but they do have good waffle fries. I'm not going to mention the name of the restaurant, but if I buy someone fries, and I say I'm not going to eat because I'm fasting, but I'm you know, and anyhow, and so I ask my son Matthew. This is all fictitious, Matthew. Matthew, can I have a waffle fry? Mine. Say what? Give me that waffle fry right now. You're not going to. Okay. I mean, how ridiculous. It's mine. No. But, of course, Matthew doesn't do that. And I say, Matthew, give me the fries, even the ones that fell in the bag. What does Matthew say? Oh, dear father. <laughs> You're the most amazing pastor this size of the Mississippi I am so happy that you're my dad. There's no other dad like you in all of Cheshire or all Connecticut or the United States. You're so wise beyond your years, even though you're getting old. And, and, and Dad, I, I just am so thankful to be your son. I'm thankful for the Nike shoes you bought me. I'm thank you for all the things that you do for me. And so, Father, out of the benevolence of my heart, I recognize that without you, I wouldn't have these French fries. So here, take the whole bag. I don't need it. Neither do you, Dad, but because I love you (laughs) and you went one more notch on your belt, I'm going to give it to you anyhow. What am I going to do? I'm going to feel guilty and let them keep the fries. But, no, you know, that's how you kind of have to ask, right? So that's what happens. It's God's. And so money is a good test, everybody. It is. It's a good test. And I'm not saying that so we can get more offering. No, I'm saying that because it's true. So sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's grow. And sometimes it's go slow. The Bible says he didn't give them the the total promised land yet. Why? They didn't have enough people to tame all the wild animals. You can't handle the wild animals of what you're asking for. You can't. 
And so I asked God, God, grow the church. God said, why do you want the church to grow for? Uh, yeah, why? Get your motors right. Right? So I'm just a human being like the rest of you. I constantly have to check my motives. The Bible says your heart is deceitful above all else. Who could know it? Remember the de- that definition of, of de- deception. You don't know you're deceived. That's why we have each other. That's why we have groups. People will ask me, why are you upset about that? I don't know. I think you got an issue with this person. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. I need that. So do you. You live by yourself. You start believing your, you start drinking your own stuff. Okay? So no, grow, go slow. In Hebrews eleven thirteen 13 says this, all these people died. It talks about these great men and women of faith, including prostitutes. A prostitute is in this list of great people. There's hope for everybody. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from afar, a distant, and they welcomed it. Hello. Uh, do you recognize that Abraham was the father of many nations? He didn't see it in his time. As far as I can tell, the people of promise was about eight people. But guess what? Today, in the great cloud of witnesses, he sees us here in Cheshire. He sees billions of people around the world worshiping God. And God chose this man who was willing to go out on a limb and believe God and it was accounted to him righteousness. He stepped out in faith. Did not receive in his lifetime. You do not know what your act of obedience could be. You having an interaction with the person at the deli. Your interaction with someone at work. Your interaction with your neighbor. You don't know that one phrase you said just planted a seed in their mind. 20 years go by. They're in a hospital dying. They remember that this person that lived in my block was a great person. They gave their life to Christ and everything changes. And then their grandson gets saved. And the grandson becomes a great evangelist. You do not know what your act of obedience do. God's not going to judge you what I do. He'll judge each of us based on what he's telling us to do. And so we have to recognize that. Sometimes it's go slow. We don't know. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's you need to grow. Go slow. And here's my favorite one. It's not from Tom Brady, but he says it. Let's go. Right? Let's go. God says, yep. Right now, here it is. And this is the confidence that we have towards him, that we ask anything according to what? Whose will? Whose will? His will. He hears us. And we know that if he hears us and whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Until God says no, I will keep on. Let me just say one thing. There is a book called Daniel. Daniel was one of the most godly people, man, that ever was on the face of the planet. In Daniel chapter 10, he prayed. No answer came for 21 days. Finally, the angel showed up and said, I was in battle. Sometimes you and I have to, I don't understand it. We have to battle in prayer. Keep praying for that loved one. Keep praying for that sick person. Unless God says, stop, I'm going to pray. What happens if they die? What happens if they live? We've seen people get raised. We've seen people get healed of cancer. We've seen, uh, we've seen ear, um, what do you call it, people's hearing come back. We've seen marriages healed. We've seen sexual orientations changed and healed. We've seen all kinds of cool stuff, and I've seen the opposite. But I want to be like, the, like Job. Though he slay me, I will trust him. I'm going to continue to, until God says, enough. I'm going to birth in prayer. And one can chase a 1,000 to 10,000. Watch what God will do through a praying church. And so since we're on these 10 days of prayers, I'm going to pray right now for all of us. Lord Jesus, 
I'm asking, Father, that this would not be some sermon that we go, oh, that was nice. But, Father, no, that we would take it seriously, Lord, that we'll be praying, that we believe you for miracles. And, we're, and though, Lord, we're going to trust you. We're going to believe you. Father, I pray this would be a church that grows in prayer, that we'd have people going to hospitals, visiting people, praying. We'd have people going together and, and praying for the governor's mansion. We'd have people coming here and praying for the town meetings. And, Lord, we would not do it in an arrogant way. We'd go around high schools praying for peace and upon our school system that we pray for our government lord and that we be a people of prayer father we would see lost ones get saved the sick get healed in jesus name and father we are praying that you would raise us up to be almighty men and women and children of faith that we are people that don't give up that we're like that widow who asked for justice we're like the woman with the issue of blood who said i must touch the master and she was willing to crawl through the crowd to touch the cloak of your robe that you would get healed. Father, in Jesus' name, would you raise it up in this place? Father, may you be a mighty house of prayer for the nations. You said, I look for someone to stand in the gap, and since I found no one, the Lord, we want to stand in the gap for each other, for our culture, for our cities, for our families, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen.